So do you remember that story of the apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado, which had been taken over by Venezuelan gangs? And we covered this on the show. And the story was this apartment complex had been taken over gangs that these guys, we saw videos of them with guns going to various residence stores. The reports were that they were shaking down the residents and making them pay them rent. Um, we then played a video clip of the police department in Colorado saying, oh, this is not true. We, we've been here, we're investigating, we, nobody's saying anything, they're all saying everything's fine, you know, everything's cool, everything's, everything's, everything's hunky-dory. Um, and one thing that we had said on the show was that, well, you don't really know, a lot of people don't want to rat out because they're afraid that they're going to be hunted down later. They're afraid, you know, their family members are being, um, are being potentially um, threatened. You know, there's a lot of things there, but it just, the story was there's no migrant gang and the Colorado police is, you know, saying, no, it's, it's, it's all a bunch of crap. Well, the management company who actually manages that building says, no, there are gangs. We have proof. We've been trying to get the police to do something and they've done absolutely nothing. And they put out this entire tweet thread with everything that's been going on that they've been dealing with as a management company. And nothing is still being done about this gang, this violent gang with these armed men shaking these people down and committing acts of violence. So here's the thread. This is from CBZ Management. Gangs have taken control of several of our properties in Aurora, Colorado. So that's interesting. They're saying several properties in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, we also have an update that we're going to get to after this thread where apparently the same gang has taken over several apartment complexes in now San Antonio, Texas. So they say, in an attempt to discredit this fact for political purposes and avoid governmental accountability, some have spread false information about our situation. Let's set the record straight. We started managing these buildings when new owners acquired the Colorado properties in 2019. At the time, the properties were in poor condition and our mission was to renovate them, thereby, in, thereby increasing their value. This was an ambitious project that would significantly benefit the people of Aurora while providing returns to new owners. We understood this project would take years to yield results and would be both time consuming and costly involving comprehensive upgrades to every unit and the overall structure to manage the project effectively given our New York based operations. Our representative moved to Colorado with his family. We also undertook a complete renovation of nearly every unit in the now well-known building you've seen in the news. The images shown depict our newly renovated apartments. Everything was progressing smoothly. Property values were rising and vacancy rates were dropping. It was a win-win for both the owners and the city of Aurora. Then the gangs arrived. After some time, we noticed a rise in crime and tenant complaints. The most alarming moment occurred when our local CBZ representative, the one that moved there, was attacked at the end of 2023. He had gone to inspect a recently vacated three bedroom apartment, a rare occurrence for such a large unit, only to find a group of men already inside. When he refused their $500 bribe to overlook the situation, they brutally attacked him. And the photo that you saw, that was him, that was taken shortly after he escaped just before being admitted to the hospital. The video footage comes from one of our security cameras capturing part of the assault. After the attack on our CBZ representative, he began getting threatened, threatening text messages. We also frequently found people illegally occupying newly vacated apartments during scheduled tours. This was initially attributed to an influx of migrants exploiting squatter laws. We even received a call from a tenant returning from vacation only to find strangers living in his apartment. And this legitimate tenant was forced to find a new home after police couldn't help him. Can you imagine? You go away on vacation, you come back from vacation and there are squatters in your house and the police cannot help you? What? What do you mean the police can't help you? There are people in your home, the apartment you're renting and the police are gonna do nothing about it. So he was forced to find a new home because the police couldn't help him. How does that, How is that even possible? I don't even know how that's possible. They go on to say, when confronted many of these illegal tenants and squatters claimed they had already paid rent, which we soon realized was true but not to us, they were paying rent to a different entity. So these gang members would move people into these apartments and say, we have an apartment for rent for you. And the people would go, okay, great. And they'd move into these apartments and they would pay rent to these gang members thinking it's legitimate only to only, <laughs> but it wasn't. They said to address this entity, gangs, 
We contacted every city official we could think of for help with the problem, and unfortunately, none were willing to take meaningful action. Meanwhile, our CBZ representative continued receiving threatening messages in which these criminals revealed his home address and his spouse's name. Wow, so they doxed him? I mean, look at the, the types of stuff that they, I'm not going to read it out loud, but the types of things that they harassed this guy with. Very scary. Finally, the APD, FBI, and Homeland Security informed us that those sending the messages and controlling our buildings were part of the notorious Tren de Argua gang from Venezuela. They also mentioned that our situation was just a blip on the radar as this gang is causing significant problems nationwide. What? What? Two days after our FBI meeting, the gang confronted on our on-site man the gang confronted our on-site manager, asserting control over all three properties. They offered an ultimatum: share rental income 50-50 or lose the buildings permanently. They also threatened to harm him and his family. For the safety of our management team and their families, we withdrew them from the properties and focused on seeking help from government agencies. I mean, this is just an absolute nightmare. Once we fully understood what we and our tenants were facing, we expected a swift response. The city offering meaningful resources and police protection. You would think, right, at that point, perhaps even from the National Guard to help us regain control of our properties. That never happened. Instead, we were left helpless, watching as violence, bullets, and destruction overtook our buildings. Many of our legitimate tenants fled out of fear. Despite the obvious crises, several city officials refused to acknowledge the reality. Instead, they blamed us, citing code violations as the reason for shutting down our property, violations we couldn't resolve for tenants who weren't even ours. And this is a, a little bit of a news program that they posted. Let's watch this. As far as what happens next, the city says unless the property owners remedy every single documented violation, the city will designate the building as unsafe due to its condition not because of gangs. Does that make sense to anybody? Does that make sense to anyone? They say, finally, one city councilwoman, Danny, uh, Danny Jarinski, decided to take action after one of our last remaining legitimate tenants, Cindy Romero, reached out to her in desperation. Luckily, Cindy had her own cameras. Most of ours had been destroyed by the gangs and provided video proof to the councilwoman. So this resident, a legitimate tenant, took her cameras, filmed it all, gave it to this councilwoman and said, help us, somebody help us. I cannot believe it got to this point. Why, why weren't the police helping? Said she realized the city could no longer ignore the situation if it was documented on camera. So basically, if you don't have it on camera, they're just going to completely ignore you because they don't want to have to deal with this. Once, and they have reasons why they don't, and we'll get to the reasons. It says, once she gathered sufficient video evidence, she assisted the tenant in relocating to safety before publicly releasing the footage. And then here is the new, finally, the news started talking about this. And here's the news program um, covering this incident and the councilwoman. There have been rumblings of new gang activity in Aurora all summer. Officials have skated around the topic, but now there's video and victims they can't deny. It's really like being held hostage. Cindy was a prisoner in her own home. She's lived in this building at 12th and Dallas for years. This summer, when crime got worse, Cindy brought cameras. Doorbell video shows a group of armed men forcing their way into her neighbor's home. Another night, her camera outside captured two men approaching a vehicle, guns drawn. She's called 911 so often, they know her by name. He said, um, ever considered leaving. If I could afford to leave, I wouldn't be there. She says neighbors fall asleep to gunfire, her car still damaged from an overnight shootout. This is a bullet hole. It was one of the this few times Aurora police responded. They will call me and say, I'm sorry, but we're not coming. We're not coming until it's a bad enough crime. This week, her pleas for help were finally answered, not by the city, but by Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski. I think that politics is being played here with people's lives. While APD and the city denied gang activity, Jarinski moved Cindy out of that apartment herself. For weeks, officers have told her Sometimes. their hands were tied. So what I am told is that police leadership put it out that no less than like three or four officers could respond to one of these complexes. Wednesday, Aurora police said they're aware that components of TDA are operating in Aurora 
In a statement, APD says it would be improper at this time for the city and APD to make any conclusory statements about specific incidents or provide details about law enforcement strategy and operations. Based on our initial investigative work, we believe reports of TDA influence in Aurora are isolated. I now have other property owners, other apartment complexes calling and telling me the same kinds of things. Food is the biggest commodity over there. Cindy says she survived the ordeal by staying quiet, giving them food and bed bug spray every night, praying she'd hear sirens. They left us there to die. In her new home, far away, the peace she feels is fleeting because for so many others, she says there is no escape, no solution, and no sign that help will ever come. My family lives in Aurora. My daughters live there. I talk to them in moving to Aurora. If someone doesn't do something now, their apartments are next. Unbelievable. All right. They say, despite clear evidence, many still deny the reality of the situation, sometimes using us as scapegoats. That's why we are no longer staying silent. We will continue to counter falsehoods with simple facts and evidence. Yes, gangs did take control of our apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, and the government did nothing. That is the real story. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So um, that is what happened with they're saying, yes, these gangs have taken over and the government has done absolutely nothing about it. This is insane. They're, and what did the FBI say? This is only a blip. This has been going on everywhere. Well, now it's come out that these same gangs, the same Venezuelan gangs have taken over four, accompli- uh, four apartment complexes in San Antonio, Texas. Very similar situation. The Daily Mail was reporting on this, so showing that for months, these gangs have been in these apartment buildings and the police have been doing an investigation and they're finally getting, and now these gangs have been there for months in San Antonio, Texas, doing very similar things, even running drug rings, prostitution. They're saying the prostitution even could involve children. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. We do have a clip though, coming from the San Antonio sheriff talking about the situation. Here it is. All right. So thanks for coming this morning. So SAPD, uh, we've received several complaints from an apartment complex in the 1300 and the 1000 300 block of Sahara Drive uh, about multiple narcotics violations, human trafficking, and threats to apartment personnel. So early this morning, the task force, including members of SAPD, covert unit, the human exploitation unit, the Texas anti-gang unit, members of Department of DP, uh, Texas Department of Public Safety and the FBI, U.S. Border Patrol and Homeland Security began an operation at this apartment. <clears throat> we had information that members of the, of the transnational gang, Tren de Aragua, were in control of the area and committing various crimes. SCPD officers and DPS troopers cleared nearly 300 vacant apartments at the complex this morning. The task force processing over 20 individuals that we arrested. We confirmed that four TDA members are in custody. Trendaragua members are in custody. One TDA member is a confirmed enforcer for that gang. Currently, there's 19 individuals arrested with 15 detainers. HSI Homeland Security and the Emergency Removal Operations have taken custody of the four confirmed TDA members. There were individuals with confirmed uh, with confirmed warrants. Multiple individuals had already had removal orders through HSI. The San Antonio Police Department, in par- partnership with our state and federal partners, we assure the community and members of the public that we are committed to their safety and we are on top of this TDA issue that seems to have come uh, become very public lately. Today's operation is just one example of that commitment. So we will continue to follow up and investigate on any complaints of illegal activity from TDA or any gang members for that matter. <clears throat> this is an ongoing investigation. Even though we finished here at the complex, we are not done. This investigation has been in the works for weeks. And uh, as I said, it's not finished. And uh, I'll answer whatever questions I can uh, with 
deference to this investigation that's ongoing. Are you able to say how long the gang's been operating in Bear County in San Antonio? It's been operating for several months. How, what's the best way to identify the members? Is it a tattoo? Is it something significant? They, well, they are, there is tattoos, and uh, they are known to wear red. That's not to say that everybody wearing red is a TDA gang member, but their gang affiliation is the color red. This area, the complex that you mentioned, is more on the north side. Is this a specific area they've been operating in town? Well, we, this is where we're starting. Is there a reason why they've been operating around this area? I don't know. Well, there might be other hot spots, or is this the first one that you guys know? This is just the first one we're hit. We've hit it. We're hitting. We've got other places that we are going to hit. <clears throat> what's your message to the gang? Pardon? What's, what's your message to the gang? That we are on to you, and we're coming for you. We know where you are, and we're coming for you. Oh, gosh, this is so scary. Um... Yeah, you know, the police saying we're coming for you. Well, they're maybe coming for you. I mean, the last thing I want to see happen is for the United States to kind of go into this, the place where Mexico is in right now. Mexico has been trying to clean up corruption in the police force and go after the cartels. And it's really scary. If you go to Puerto Vallarta, um, you're going to see police officers carrying large rifles and you'll hear stories of uh, cartel and and police gunfights like in the in the streets. You know, they'll say, Tourists should be wary of all places. I mean, it's it's still safe to go to places like Puerto Vallarta, but they're saying other places people have to be really careful because um, there's the the cartels have been actively going after the police and hunting them down and killing them and their family members to try to get them to stay silent to not go after them. And that's I would just hate to see something like that happen. So the big question is, how did we let this get to this point with these Venezuelan gangs? Well, we can. There's there's a, two reasons why this happened. One big reason why this happened, and that is that the United States decided to destabilize Venezuela. You remember 2019 when um, it was the State of the Union address. This was when Trump was president and they brought Juan Guaido in and both Democrat. It was the only time, you know, Democrats sat there with sour faces the whole time, anything Trump said. But when Trump said Juan Guaido in Venezuela and we're going to oust Maduro, they all stood up, Republicans and Democrats together, and they cheered and they clapped their hands and they staged a coup and they actively tried to destabilize. They not actively tried. They did destabilize Venezuela. They crashed Venezuela's economy. They then blamed that. They, they did everything they could to make things worse. There was already some instability going on in Venezuela, but the United States, the the actions the U.S. took against Venezuela made it way, way, way worse. And then what did the U.S. do? So that was that was 2019, January of 2019, when Trump brought Juan Guaido in. Then they staged a coup. Then Trump was no longer president one year later. By the time the instability had gotten so bad and the migrants needed to flood somewhere, they started to then get to the point, because it doesn't happen overnight. Once you destabilize a country, it takes a little bit. And by the time the Venezuelan people wanted to start fleeing for a better life, millions of them fled Venezuela it, This by the time uh, Joe Biden was president. Well, Democrats and Republicans are both in on the whole destabilization of Venezuela. So what did they do? They opened up the, the asylum. It, so these are not illegal immigrants who have come in. This is not the border crisis issue that everybody wants to pin on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris right now, which is a lot of it's their fault. A lot of it, the border though has been everybody's fault for a long time. So I have a hard time pinning it on any one person, but the Venezuelan crisis, these are not illegal immigrants. That's the, the thing to remember. These are now, and they're not even immigrants. They're asylum seekers and they were granted asylum. They were given, uh, I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans flooded into the United States. And because it was the U.S. trying to actively destabilize Venezuela, we allowed it. We opened up the floodgates. They came in and now this is what we're dealing with. So this is a two administration problem. This is both the fault of Trump and Biden because it is very much the fault of both Democrats and Republicans who love nothing together except war, war and more war. And that is what they're trying to wage with Venezuela. So um, that is why we're in the situation that we're in. 
So we we have nobody but to blame for this, but the war machine. This is squarely on the war machine. This one is not, oh, open border policies or Biden and his human, you know, the, the, oh, they just wanted to flood in migrants because they were sticking it to Trump. No, 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 no. This one in particular is the fault of the military industrial complex, the greedy corporations, those who wanted to topple Venezuela. That's That's what this is the fault of. So we got migrant gangs now taking over apartment buildings. This is the worst situation we've ever seen. And this is a war machine problem. So that's who should be cleaning it up, right? We should be sent. Why, why, are, why are we not sending it? Then they don't even send the National Guard. They don't send the war machine to clean up the war machine's problems. And that's what they absolutely should be doing. And these people should be um, deported. But they can't. there's different laws under asylum seeking. So it's not as simple as just rounding them up and shipping them back. It's a lot more complicated than that because we do have laws and we are a law abiding country. So that is what's going on here. That's the situation. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a clip from the longer, larger show that you can catch Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That'll root you to the platform where you need to be in order to get the full uncensored show every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Click on that link. Watch the full interview. See you there.